Well, hello there again. You know, all this hoopla on the TV and on the computer and everywhere about this Hamas pulling their, uh, well, it was a Pearl Harbor attack type on the Israelis over there. And now the Israelis are uh, taking issue with that. And I sit here and I was thinking about all, and it got me to thinking. You know, the way things have gone ever since World War II, actually, if you get back and you go and you look in history in the United States with that Constitution we got, uh, we got into that uh, Civil War back there in the 1860s and we went through that well and there was some good things happened during, well after the 70s the 18, 1880s 90s weren't too bad I guess of course times were kind of tough for a lot of people you get in and you get up into that 2000 you get in there and you get into when them people all them nut jobs back then uh, pulled that uh, great democracy where everybody agreed and they passed prohibition. <laughs> and right that same time right in there why they passed that uh, federal taxation law uh, and created that outfit known as the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, that's a dandy. And then they took and they emasculated the Constitution with the next one, I think it was the 17th Amendment, where senators were elected by the people and not chosen by the legislatures of the independent sovereign states to represent the states. The whole purpose behind that in the Constitution was to make all states equal in one house, the Senate, so that there was, uh, didn't matter how many people's out in California, they had two senators. Don't matter how many people's in uh, Massachusetts, two senators. Don't matter how few people Wyoming's got, two senators. You see that whole thing worked out. Don't matter how poor Arkansas or Alabama or Mississippi was, still had two senators. So back there in that Republican form of government that we had, uh, it was a good deal. Now, keep coming through and you get in there to that Woodrow Wilson guy. Now, he, you get to looking at some of the things he'd done. He never did the United States of America any favors by conning the men into jo joining up and going over to Europe to fight that regional battle that had been going on for years, centuries even. Uh, if you remember old, old Napoleon, he got up there with uh, that uh, British guy and met his Waterloo and yeah. Oh, you go that, that Alsace-Lorraine, they fought over that for years. Stuff, it didn't have, it was, well, you come through there and then them guys forced reparations onto Germany for all the damage it had done. Okay, then that Great Depression hit. Oh, and that's when them big fancy guys with all the money were jumping off of buildings up in New York City and some places and everything. Oh, it was wonderful times, I guess. So you come up through, and the thing that ended the Great Depression wasn't really that Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his communist buddies and everything, getting all that uh, socialist stuff, uh, 
No, that wasn't really it, turning the United States into a welfare state. No, that wasn't really it. It was Germany building all them <laughs> airplanes and tanks and setting out to whip the world. <laughs> and they would have done it if they'd have minded their own business and, not, and left Russia alone till after they'd whipped the rest of it. Of course, you go back, and that was something old Robert E. Lee did. He, as long, if he'd have stayed out of Pennsylvania, they'd have had a tough time of beating the South, them northern uh, big shots, the industrialists and the big money men that wanted all the southern commodities for nothing. <laughs> yeah, but you come through. Well, you get up there and... Well, now, ever since Korea, it has been basically one continuous war for the United States. The United States has been the bully on the block. Now, there was a scripture that I got to thinking about. And in that day shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars, and the whole earth shall be in commotion. And men's hearts shall fail them, and they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. Well, you know, we got all these people, oh, that Biden and that guy that was uh, Clinton's uh, vice president, and that John Kerry, and all these that. That Thunberg girl, that teenager that was such a big shot. All this other stuff. Oh, running around. Oh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Oh, we got to get rid of fossil fuels. They're destroying the earth. We got to get rid of this. We got to get rid of that. Well, <laughs> read the news now. Pay attention to how them companies building them big, humongous windmills are doing. Uh, they got a problem that some of them's tipping over and nobody really knows why. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on. Now, them solar farms that they got out there, they're putting all over the place. They got problems with them, too. Uh, one of the big problems is how are you going to transport uh, all that electricity to where it's needed? You know, we got all kinds of problems. Now that that bunch of who dads back there in Washington are sending all that money over there to Ukraine. Now they're sending bullets and planes and stuff to Israel. I got no complaint about that Israel thing, but that deal over there in uh, Ukraine and Russia, the United States has been poking that bear that was the Soviet Union, and it now is still Russia, with a stick for the last, ever since World War II ended. And Russia sat there, and that Putin guy, he come along and said, don't do that. I don't, we don't want you to have that right next to our border. We want, don't want to be bothered with all that stuff. We want you to stay back. Don't make Ukraine into NATO. Don't get Finland and Sweden into NATO. Just stay off our borders. Leave us alone. Well, you know, that ain't going to happen. And men's hearts are failing them. Well, you know, I see some stuff parties on these uh, <laughs> this computer here about women complaining they can't find any masculine men anymore. Well, that's because their hearts have failed them. <laughs> they, uh, we had a bunch of them tough women out there turning this into a matriarchal society trying to. And it's a patriarchal society. Has been since the beginning of Adam. If you go into, well, I'd say probably the most... Uh, Biggest religions on earth all believe in a patriarchal system. So, well, I just was thinking about that. The hurricanes, the storms, the tornadoes, the hailstorms, 
the big rain and the flooding all over the place and the big fires. You get to look in and, oh, they're unseasonal, a lot of them. But the global warming isn't what they're claiming. If you look at the temperature and they take temperatures away from them heat sinks, known as big cities, uh, the oceans aren't really warming like they're claiming. The oceans aren't rising like they're claiming. If you get to looking at the hist at the, go look at the science. Look it up on the computer. There's a lot of these things coming out that ain't blocked. You know, there's a lot of that stuff. You know, I look at all that stuff, and I, between what I know and what I've read and the scriptures that I believe in, it's all what's supposed to happen. Man's got no control over it. Uh, there's two churches. One, if you want to be in that one, you got to repent. Quit doing evil things. Quit doing wicked things. Quit stealing. Quit lying. All that kind of stuff. The other one, if you want to be in that church, that old Satan's church there, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. So, it's kind of neat to sit back and watch, but I really don't feel sorry for anybody either way. I've got empathy for people that are suffering because of all the wickedness and the stupidity and foolishness that's going on. But other than that, I don't have any problems. Well, think about it. May God bless you. Let's talk to you again.